Zimbabwe more than doubled interest rates to 200 percent in an effort to tame inflation and also outlined plans to make the U.S. dollar legal tender in the southern African nation for the next five years, according to authorities on Monday. Uh, soaring inflation has been piling pressure on a population already struggling with shortages and cast a shadow over President Emerson Mangagwa's bid to revitalize an economy that suffered decades of decline and bouts of financial chaos under the leadership of former President Robert Mugabe. To discuss further, we have Eddie Cross, an economist from Harare, joining us. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much, Eddie, uh, for being with us. Um, what would you say are the key factors behind uh, Zimbabwe's rising inflation, 191 uh, percent in June, uh, while we say there's a deceleration into double digits towards, you know, from late 2021? Yeah, I think the reality is that the authorities here have lost control of monetary policy. And I think this is the principal problem now confronting the state. Um, I think all other fundamentals, the fiscal side is absolutely under control. We have a fiscal surplus. There's no problems on the budget side. We're not printing significant sums of money. And our exports are, are in fact, increasing quite dramatically. So we have a balance of payment surplus. There's no reason why we should be facing this particular crisis. But we have a peculiar history in the monetary policy sector. So Zimbabwe does not follow conventional uh, <clears throat> policies when it comes to monetary policy. And I think the attempts today by, to try and control inflation by classical means is futile. Uh, I don't think it'll have any impact at all on the fundamental situation, which is being driven by the parallel market rate, uh, which is in turn being driven by speculative pressures inside the economy. People are simply making money uh, by trading the local currency against the U.S. Underlying inflation, in fact, is not serious. About 75 percent of all transactions here are in U.S. dollars. That is why the Minister of Finance today uh, made the statement that he was going to confirm uh, the continued use of the U.S. dollar in the banking system for the next five years or so. I'm not sure whether I totally agree with that measure, but at least it puts to bed the issue of whether or not the U.S. dollar is going to be valid going forward. But that means that 75 percent of, of transactions are being done in USD, and the inflation rate in USD is about 2 percent. So <clears throat> fundamentally... The main problem is simply that we're facing the death of the local dollar. And this is the second time it's happened. And uh, I think it's something that could have been corrected quite easily. Uh, but it's not being done because we continue to believe that our unconventional approach to monetary policy is the right one. And it's not. Mm, thank you for that, Eddie. Um, how are businesses and ordinary, ordinary Zimbabweans coping with this new uptick in uh, consumer prices? Well, it's nothing new for us. We've been there before. In 2008, prices were doubling every three hours. It was complete madness. And eventually, we had to dollarize totally and stop using our local currency. Our local currency simply died on its feet and was no longer valid tenure. As far as the market was concerned, we continued to pretend that it was real currency, but it wasn't. And I, I'm, I'm afraid that if we don't get to grips with this situation, we're going to face a repeat of that. And, uh, you know, you, you, if you do the same things, continue to do the same things and expect a different outcome, you're being delusional. Mm, gosh. Um, as far as the authorities in Harare, you know, what are they saying about the inflation figure trending higher? Are they sounding like they understand what's going on? I've got no doubt about it. They they do understand that. And uh, I think they understand how serious it is. We, we're getting close to the hyperinflation level, which is 50% price changes per month. As last month, we were 37. Previous month, we were 21. So we're rapidly approaching the hyperinflation uh, level. And uh, that's extremely serious. For anybody who earns uh, an income in a local currency, uh, pensioners, um, people on fixed incomes, the civil service. Uh, this is a real crisis. Uh, they have double civil service salaries next month, but even that doesn't uh, even bring it close to meeting inflationary pressures in local currency. Uh, I mean, I paid for a, 
for an expense today in a, in a restaurant, and the rate they used was 700 to 1. And that's indicative of, of just what's going on. It's, it's, it's crazy. This is a lunatic asylum, and uh, I'm afraid I think the inmates are in charge. <laughs> I mean, Eddie, it's, it's a pretty serious, I mean, yeah, it's a, it, well, the humor is well placed, but it's a pretty, pretty serious situation. Can you tie in, I guess, the exchange rates with the Zimbabwean dollar? Is, what, what, what's the way forward? Do you just give up on the local currency or what can be done to bring confidence back into the local currency? I think it's very simple. You've got to trust the market. I can remember a time when all of our neighboring states, except South Africa and Botswana, were in a similar situation to us, where if you traded in the local currency, you were given bricks of currency to deal with um, in Zambia, for example. Um, and today, all of those countries are, have stable currencies. They have no, none of this nonsense in their local markets. And the simple facts are that they've adopted a standard uh, system, market-based to determine exchange rate prices. If we did that here, I'm absolutely certain our currency would strengthen enormously. In fact, our, our principal focus would then be to buy foreign currency off the market to keep our currency weak so that it would support our export industries. But look, it's not the end of the world. Um, in other countries, such inflation rates would, you know, would be terminal. Here in Zimbabwe, that's not the case. Um, Zimbabweans are amazingly resilient, and somehow we survive. Uh, we make a plan, and I, and I think that's what everybody is doing. I feel desperately sorry for those people on fixed incomes, though, in local currency, because their their situation is is dire. Um, and clearly, we need to get this thing put right. But it's going to take huge uh, political courage to do that, and uh, I. I just hope that we're approaching that, that point in time. Um, if I had a chance to advise the president personally, my advice to him was trust the market. Don't trust the bureaucrats. Don't trust the institutions. Put your hands in the hands of the market. It's the market that our local, uh, what you might call mafia, fear most. It's the one thing they can't handle. And all the speculators and other people who are busy manipulating the situation to benefit themselves, um, the only thing that could really fix that is market forces. Thanks, Eddie. In fact, you've been saying fixed income, fixed income. I was thinking, you know, fixed income like bonds and money market. That's still on this Zimbabwean dollar and the U.S. dollar. What does this mean for investment savings um, that are earning in local currency? Does that mean that they're underwater as well? Yeah. If, you, if your savings... And your and your earnings are in local currency. You're you're stitched. Um, you're 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 drowning. Uh, the, the, you know your money is evaporating. Uh, I, I doubt today if my personal pension is worth a third of what it was worth last month. Wow. And and that's really you know if if I didn't didn't have revenue an income stream in hard currency from other sources, I'd be in dire straits. But, uh, but that's the reality. And um, we've got to get to grips with it. Uh, we need our own local currency. I completely agree with, with, the, with, with us continuing with our local currency. But we've got to start behaving according to the rules that apply to international monetary markets. Everybody else does. China does. The United States does. Europe does. Uh, we we are the exception in Africa. I mean, even Somalia has adopted a similar package of measures and have a stable currency now. Even Somalia, for God's sake, we are much bigger and much more sophisticated than Somalia. But still, we persist. And I think it's because of entrenched interests. People are making so much money out of this situation that you can't believe it. And uh, And that's the problem. What we've got to do is, is adopt strategies and policies which will basically protect the poor guy. Thanks, Eddie. Uh, last week, Zimbabwe applied for readmission into the Commonwealth of Nations. Do you see this as a possibility and what impact that readmission would have on Zimbabwe's economy, if at all, foreign exchange inflows and general well-being? You know, we're one of the most isolated countries in the world. 
<clears throat> and I don't see any justification for that anymore. I think this government has, in fact, introduced a number of reforms which have improved us. We bear no resemblance to the country which existed 20 years ago, none at all. And so I think we do, we do, we should be allowed to come back into the glo into the global community of nations. And to me, the Commonwealth would be a major step forward. I believe that uh, the majority of Commonwealth leaders today will accept Zimbabwe back into the family of, of Commonwealth states. I don't think that will have any major impact on us economically, but it is a signal to the rest of the world that one-third of the world's population, the countries of the world, more than 50 countries, have accepted Zimbabwe back into their community and I think this would also trigger a positive, a positive response, for example, from the United States and Europe. And so I think it would be a big step forward for us. And I, I personally would welcome it. I think we have a contribution to make to the Commonwealth. And I would hope that we'd be able to get in there and play a positive role. Eddie Cross, uh, economist in Harare, always a pleasure talking to you. So, so informative each time you, you touch base. Thank you so much for giving us the latest on uh, Zimbabwe and inflation levels and the exchange rate.